Good afternoon, folks. This is Joe Papano from Fiberlink Communications. Uh, thanks for joining again for our webinar today. Um, we've got uh, a special webinar today. We've got a, uh, a uh, guest from EchoWorks, uh, Robbie Gulry, product manager at EchoWorks. Hi, Robbie. Hey, guys. How are you? And uh, we're going to talk today about, uh, you know, frankly, you know, what's probably the most important topic when you're uh, worried about mobile devices, which is how do I make sure my data is protected? And so obviously part of that means protecting the device, but obviously uh, encryption and specifically encryption of email, which is one of the w ways that uh, data can get to these devices and potentially leak off them. Uh, is, uh, you know, an area that people definitely need to be aware of. And so, you know, that's something for sure that uh, we want to make sure people have a good understanding of. And, of course, uh, we're good friends with the folks at EchoWorks, um, like their product a lot, and we thought that it would be helpful for people to hear how uh, EchoWorks can help solve that problem and, and also how, uh, you know, kind of, you know, most people in the MDM industry kind of view it. So, um you know, as usual, um, we're going to do some Q&A uh, at the end of the webinar, so you can either send your questions in during the, during the webinar via chat or kind of hold them till the end. Uh, we'll be doing polls throughout the webinar. I think we've got four planned for today, so, you know, if you want to participate in those, that would be great. Uh, and um, we're going to uh, – I don't think we're going to do a demo today um, because we've got a lot of material to cover, but um, we're going to certainly talk in depth about uh, – EchoWorks product, Mobile Encrypt, as well as uh, some of the features of Maz360 and how they can help you form kind of a holistic uh, uh, solution to the problem of securing uh, data on mobile devices. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Robbie. Robbie, thanks for joining us today. Great. Thank you, Joe, for the introduction. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone on the uh on the phone, I see uh, I see a number of folks that have joined just a couple of seconds ago to take their uh, uh, time out of their busy schedule to uh, hopefully uh, uh, gain some insights about MDM as well as uh, mobile encryption. Uh, my goal here is really to keep this uh, uh, more of a uh, an education uh, webinar and less on the sales and product sort of uh, 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 feature functionality side. Uh, as you can see here, the agenda uh, pretty simple. We're going to get into the mobile landscape and talk a little bit about the challenges that IT folks and uh, compliance folks uh, see as it relates to uh, mobile privacy uh, and encryption. Uh, we're also going to talk about how encryption and MDM fit very well together, uh, my, uh, my, uh, uh, the reason why our relationship with, uh, with FiberLink is, uh, is so strong. Uh, and then uh, we'll get uh, do a little deep dive into the uh, mobile encrypt applications. There's a couple of variations that I'd like to talk about today. Uh, and then we'll get into, finally, uh, Joe will introduce some of the app management capabilities that uh, FiberLink brings uh, to the table. Uh, and then, like uh, Joe mentioned, the last 15, 20 minutes or so, we'll uh, leave it up to the uh, panel for, uh, for some Q&A. So, Robbie, uh, we're going we're gonna to open up our first poll right now, and then you can jump into the next slide. Um, so before I officially get started, uh, I wanted to quickly introduce EchoWorks. You may have not uh, uh, heard of the company. We've been in the business of uh, email encryption, uh, uh, digital signatures, uh, credential management as a service for about eight years now. Uh, we power some of the largest brands that you probably already know, companies like uh, Symantec, McAfee, uh, AT&T, British Telecom, and, and a host of others that uh, offer uh, endpoint email encryption solutions for PCs and Macs. They offer gateway email encryption uh, for uh, generally policy-based email encryption capabilities. All of them uh, are, uh, all of these partners that I've mentioned, uh, utilize the EchoWorks technology to provide uh, these type of uh, uh, proactive sort of email encryption solutions to their particular customers. So we've been in the space for uh, a number of years. We have a uh, completely hosted uh, model, uh, and we run a PKI-based platform across a number of uh, data centers globally. And 
on top of this platform, we built solutions for cloud uh, storage, uh, for hosted exchange providers and customers, uh, gateway and other email uh, sort of uh, encryption solutions, as well as what we're going to focus in on today, which is the mobility side of the house. So these are uh, solutions for iPhone, for iPads, for BlackBerry devices, as well as the variations of Android devices that are out there. Um, along with that, we've uh, built a number of uh, intelligence around um, how to store files, folders uh, across not only your local hard drive, but your, uh, your network drives as well. Um, so, so let's uh, level set here. Uh, most of you are familiar with uh, this concept and probably have lived it, uh, as I have. Uh, we've grown up with uh, mobility. Uh, in fact, if you look at every tech cycle, uh, if you look at PCs, and even if you go back to the 70s and you look at mainframes and mid-ranges, uh, you know, the tech cycle lasts for about 10 years for each of these individual sort of technologies. And if you really kind of put a put perspective on mobility, we're only in year three or four of, uh, of the mobile cycle. So that means that there's a lot more opportunity, there's a lot more technology that we've yet to see. You may have heard about near field communications and, uh, and mobile wallets and uh, mobile technologies that start your car and regulate the, the intake of your carburetor and all types of interesting evolution to technology. Uh, so we've seen the, the, the evolution of mobility uh, sort of grow in front of our eyes. We've had um, you know, devices like the Motorola StarTac, which is my, one of my favorite devices. I had a BlackBerry Curve for a number of years, and really, at the end of the day, we are now all, or most of us, are walking around with really computers, you know, from dual core uh, running uh, the new Android operating system, uh, uh, ice cream sandwich with uh, super uh, screens with all types of capabilities that basically we walk around with in our pockets, and, and ultimately what that brings is... Um, uh, a lot of information that we store on these devices, whether it's our, in our inboxes, whether it's files and folders that we access uh, in the cloud, uh, you know, utilizing services like Dropbox and Box.net. And, and this is where the IT guys get a little bit uh, nervous. You know, how do we protect the information that's uh, floating around uh, from, uh, from device to device and, uh, and dynamic network resource to network resource. And ultimately, uh, I think the solutions that um, FiberLink and EchoWorks bring to the table help address a number of these big concerns as it relates to data leakage. And Robbie, based on you know, the poll results there, I mean, over half of the folks uh, replied back that you know, most of their messaging traffic uh, has confidential information in it, so, so you know, you know, there's a there's a real need and a real problem that needs to get solved here. Yeah, absolutely. I have I have nothing to add other than I absolutely agree, uh, and that's why we're we've been in the business for a number of years and continue to evolve, uh, you know, our solution solution sets to uh, meet the needs of uh, of the buyers that are obviously. Uh, moving beyond just BlackBerry devices into iOS devices as well as the Android world as well. Um, yeah. So, you know, the dynamics are quite clear, uh, and you may have read a number of articles and uh, seen blog posts that really refer to uh, the era of the mobile business, as I like to call it. You know, we've gone from, you know, fixed, slow, and limited connectivity to always connected everywhere. You know, LTE, 4G, uh, evolution of 3G, uh, I, I've got a Verizon. Uh, I shouldn't. I shouldn't mention brands, but I love my Verizon card. I get uh, 15 megabits downstream uh, in uh, in the Atlanta area, uh, regardless of where I am. And it's 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 been a godsend. And you know we're used to that uh, on my uh, various uh, uh, mobile devices. I'm also used to being connected all the time and looking at video and doing the things that I want to do, not only in my personal life but in my business life as well. You know, we've gone from an era where devices were provided and given by the corporation. Um, you know, we we uh, are uh, are uh, now uh, the 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 organization that chooses. We're the individuals that choose what device we want. We have brought in iPads and iPhones and uh, Android devices to the to the uh, business uh, marketplace and uh, and basically have said yes, you must get this connected to the exchange server and let, allow me to access network resources. Let me VPN into the network. So we have a lot more choice and we bring a lot more um, sort of authority to the table as individual users. Obviously the devices are much more mobile. Um, when I started my career in IT, it was a, 
big fat PC sitting on my desk, and when I went home, I didn't think about it. Now I wake up uh, with my uh, mobile device, I go to sleep with my mobile device, and, and I think that's the case for uh, for a lot of us. Uh, we're obviously highly empowered and quite educated, uh, and so we know what we want in general. But what that means is, uh, from a from a security perspective, it it uh, 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 raises a number of huge challenges uh, and management nightmare, frankly, for the IT community. And and that's ultimately where, uh, you know, some of these areas that, uh, that we're going to discuss in the next few minutes really get into and try to resolve. Yeah, we're going to, uh, we're going to open up our uh, second poll now, and we're just asking folks uh, to tell us what data is important for them to secure on mobile devices. Great. Thank you, Joe. Um, so moving on, as you guys are looking at the poll question, um, what is the security challenges or what are the security ch security challenges for the business? Ultimately, they're broken up into big the big four areas. Uh, first is the explosion of mobile devices. Uh, I, I did a little poll in, in, uh, in our company just internally. We have about 50 employees and we've got iPhones, we've got Android devices, we've got iPads, we've got uh, the HP uh, touchpad that was for $99 for a short time, all floating around in our in our small sample size. So you know you multiply that sample size by organizations that are much larger with much more dynamic um, sort of employees that uh, travel and, uh, and and do business all across the globe. You multiply this problem exponentially in regards to the explosion of mobile devices. Uh, the applications uh, themselves, uh, obviously, you know, not all of us. Uh, spend all day on Angry Birds, we like to, you know, do business actually with some of these applications. So from an enterprise perspective, how do we keep track? How do we manage? How do we control the installation of these uh, these applications? And that's ultimately where MDM solutions really bring um, a lot of control, uh, verifiability to the apps, as well as the whole notion of an enterprise app store that I'll refer to uh, uh, briefly. The third area is data management. Uh, you know, this is where encryption plays an important role. Is how do enterprises protect the data and critical information that is uh, contained on the devices, that is being utilized by the devices and individuals using these devices to send uh, to either recipients internally or folks outside of the uh, the organization. And then finally, we uh, have to be concerned about ownership. You know, if I do own my device and I bring it into the network. How does IT monitor it? How do I create a profile uh, that allows me to only remove the corporate information and not the personal information on the device? What happens when the device gets uh, left in a taxi cab in New York City, uh, and uh, what do I do to lock it down and make sure that uh, you know the information doesn't get in the wrong hands? And again, these are these are high-level challenges with high-level sort of problems, uh, and uh, let's talk a little bit about that. And hey, Robbie, we, we've got kind of the poll results up there. I think good news for you. No one, no one thinks that that securing data is unimportant. So that's great news. Um, you know, the other thing that you mentioned earlier on that last slide was, you know, that that whole bring your own device use case or that employee owned use case, and that's certainly what we see. You know, is, is kind of one of the primary use cases for companies that come to us uh, to either evaluate or buy Mass 360. So. Yeah, you know, that is kind of the, the 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 kind of the biggest issue or concern people are trying to solve right now. Yeah, I see the numbers here. Um, Sixty-five percent uh, basically have stated that uh, they answered the first uh, first choice, which is it's quite important to make sure that the data is secured on these devices. So again, uh, nothing much to add other than to just agree uh, with the uh, with the audience uh, uh, that. Securing data is important. You know, some of the major security risks uh, include uh, the, the the most obvious, the lost or stolen device scenario. In fact, I read a very interesting uh, study from IDC recently that basically stated that 25% of all mobile devices in their lives will be lost or stolen. Uh, that's one in four. That was astounding uh, to me, uh, wow. which, which again, uh, raises the need for device encryption, device management, and a more holistic approach to mobile security. The second area, which is, um, as Georgia Tech, which is my alma mater, uh, calls it a, a huge epidemic that, uh, that we're going to be seeing in the next, uh, next year or two, uh, which is rogue websites used to do things like search poisoning, to do things like uh, 
uh, uh, pretending to be valid uh, uh, websites. It's so much easier to, uh, to pretend that you are eBay on a much smaller screen than it is on a, on a standard 22-inch uh, monitor you know, that you may be running, on, uh, on a, on a, uh, running Safari on with your, uh, with your Mac. Uh, so you know, these sort of uh, web-based attacks are starting to show up over and over again, and again, talks to the, uh, to the major security risks that we, uh, that we have. Some of the other boxes that I won't get into in, in, uh, in verbatim, but let's talk a little bit about uh, data device breaches. In fact, uh, another interesting stat from IDC, I think it was the same report, uh, talked about one in three mobile devices, uh, or one in three uh, data breaches come from mobile devices to be more accurate, which is, a, which is again, a, a pretty astounding number if you kind of look at the evolution of mobility over the last few years. Uh, and then you've got unsecured networks, malicious software. This is a big epidemic in some of the non-verified Android uh, quote-unquote marketplaces. Or even if you've jailbroken your iPhone and you happen to uh, go to the Cydia marketplace, you don't really know what you're downloading to your phone. Uh, and so unverified apps which cause malicious software that uh, act in a number of probably illicit uh, ways to, uh, to gain uh, information across your particular device. And then, you know, the obvious things that we've seen in the traditional sort of IT sense for a number of years now, which is backdoor to enterprise networks, again, all possible through compromised mobile devices. And then lastly, data loss and, and integrity, which is really where uh, EchoWorks uh, plays a big part. I'd say, hey, Robbie, after probably, um, you know, being able to wipe the device and set passcodes, I'd probably say the the next thing that we get asked about is app blacklisting and jailbreak detection, just for that reason. Yeah, yeah, app blacklisting, enterprise apps, uh, app stores, um, uh, all of those kind of talk to the same point, which is I want to make sure that I have control. I want my users to download apps, but it's only the apps that I know and trust and can verify. You know, if somebody's downloading some random game or uh, some software that maybe has key logging capabilities in the back door, probably not a good idea for my uh, for my employees. So, you know, moving on to the next slide, what should be secured? Um, at the highest levels, uh, these are the essentials, as I like to call them. Uh, at the device level, got to be able to lock it down, got to be able to wipe it, got to be able to locate it. Um, that's that's obviously the the, the fundamental requirements from an MDM solution, which obviously uh, FiberLink does a fantastic job of. Uh, and then you talk about the actual data itself, encryption of the data, file protection, protecting data leakage, authentication not only into the device but into networks through the device, as well as management policies. How do I protect uh, certain, uh, certain profiles on the device and what happens when uh, these devices either are introduced from a personal uh, ownership perspective or through a business partnership perspective. So there's got to be some policies and procedures in place to protect uh, the data on those devices. Then we get into the applications, and this is exactly the Joe, uh, point that Joe was uh, raising earlier, which is uh, rogue applications, device integrity or application integrity, as well as the enterprise app store become quite, uh, quite important in this particular uh, uh, silo. And then finally, the profiling and location of the user. You know, certain individuals that may have big titles, maybe, uh, maybe we shouldn't give them as much uh, authority to do what they want on the network. Maybe we should. So profiling of users, making sure that we've classified them into buckets that fit the appropriate roles that uh, they play in the organization becomes quite important as it relates to, uh, uh, to uh, the overall sort of mobile uh, security uh, uh, model. Moving on to the next slide, uh, what is the IT department to do? Uh, this, is a, this is a huge challenge. We've talked about the, the, uh, the uh, mobility and the dynamic nature of networks and mobile devices. You've got to start uh, somewhere. Why not start with policies and gen a general framework, some rules that, that we need to define as an organization. If you're bringing in your device, then we mandate that we install MDM on it. We make sure that uh, emails are encrypted. We make sure that if there's anything in cache, that needs to be encrypted. And these are policies and less to do with technology and more to do with process before you even start looking at the technology. We have to then talk through the authentication model. How do we uh, authenticate users? Do they have a device pin? 
Yes. How do they log into the network? Is it through a VPN? What type of VPN? Is it a traditional, you know, PPTP VPN that's built into iOS, or is it something that we add in a in a adjunct to that or uh, adjacent to that that gives you a more stronger authentication model? Um, then obviously encryption, education, and then obviously the monitoring uh, and device management aspects that uh, that you have to look at. So again, overall, there's there's uh, there's uh, certain elements are very similar to what IT has faced for years and years now, but there's a number of areas that need to be considered when you talk about mobile devices uh, because of generally the dynamic nature and the portability of these mobile devices. So let's talk about the MDM uh, and, uh, and encryption stack. This is how, uh, and this is the reason why our two companies are partnering together and bringing a holistic solution uh, to, uh, to the enterprise uh, customers. Obviously, from an MDM perspective, you know, what do they do well? It's, it's security enforcement, it's theft loss uh, protection, it's application management, what we talked about, settings and profile management, and then finally, asset management. How do I track the, uh, the number of iPhones that are running on 5.0 versus 4.3.5 versus Android, uh, you know, gingerbread versus, uh, versus uh, ice cream sandwich, uh, on and on and on. And that's MDM. But really underlying all of this MDM capability is the whole notion of encryption, digital identities, credential management. I want to be able to issue a certificate to an individual who owns that device, and I want to basically utilize that certificate to encrypt messages, to digitally sign messages, uh, and basically bring in a standard-based mechanism that everybody's recognized across the industry for you know, over 35 years now, which is PKI, in the context of the phone, the smartphone. So I want to leverage technology that's been around for a long time. I want to basically bring in a verifiable organization, an entity, a certificate authority, for those of you who maybe have a little background in security, and talk through the, the capabilities of issuing a certificate over the air and then basically leveraging that certificate for document encryption, email encryption, and all the other sort of uh, data protection mechanisms that, uh, that, we, uh, that we get into as we talk about mobile devices. So ultimately, uh, you know, the combination of the MDM solution and the encryption solution bring, uh, uh, as, as we all like to say, a more holistic approach to control and, uh, and security uh, to the enterprise. So we're going to, uh, Robbie, we're going to just uh, start up our third poll now and uh, ask folks uh, to give us a little bit more feedback. Great. Thanks, Joe. And, and, and the question is pretty simple and, and, uh, and exactly where I'll start. Uh, are you concerned with clear text emails being sent uh, to and from mobile devices? And if you're, if you're not, then uh, maybe, uh, maybe uh, this is not the webinar for you. But if you are, then we've got uh, Mobile Encrypt uh, Cloud and Endpoint to discuss uh, uh, briefly. What, what we decided to do is we looked at the market uh, uh, to give you a little bit of background and started to... Uh, look at some of the um, uh, technologies that exist today. You know, good technologies is an example. Uh, Zimbra is an example that have some very, very good mobile capability. But we recognize from the feedback we got from the audience that encryption needed to be transparent uh, or completely sort of hidden to the user. Credential management need, needed to be hidden for the user, as well as um, uh, the notion of provisioning uh, uh, um, a app, a encryption app, and using it on the native sort of device. So the experience needed to be as unified as possible. What that really means is people wanted to or continue to want to use their native mail client, if you're talking about an iPhone, because it's the strongest mail client. It allows you to do the, the, uh, the uh, composing of the message, the reading of the message, much better than most of the third-party clients that are out there. So we, what we wanted to do is build an application or a set of applications that really talk through and kind of fit that scenario. How do we um, allow the user to continue to use their existing mail client and still bring in the security, credential management, and all that digital signature capability that I talked about a couple of minutes ago? And that's ultimately what Mobile Encrypt Endpoint brings to the table. So if I had to break up, um, Joe, you, did you want to say something? Well, you know, just kind of one thing to follow on. I mean, I, I, I love the way you guys have, uh, you know, kind of attacked this in the sense that 
You're not trying to replace the native experience of these devices, because frankly, that's you know getting back to this whole end-user-driven you know kind of you know nature of this. People bought these devices because they like Apple's apps and they want to use them, and so I think that that you know kind of focus on okay, we're going to we're going to enhance or complement these. Uh, with the proper tools and and, uh, and features that people need to make them secure is absolutely a great approach. Versus you're going to have to throw all that out and and replace it with you know our stuff. I mean we we we're not uh, we're not bad at design, but nobody does design better than Apple. Uh, and uh, and so we we looked at that and we built um, an application portfolio for iOS uh, as well as for BlackBerry uh, for those who those individuals who don't necessarily want to rely completely on a BEZ environment. And then we're also uh, in the process of launching an Android version as well. And ultimately, it's the apps themselves. It's the pickup center. What does that mean? Well, you know, the, the whole notion of encryption has, uh, in my opinion, failed over the last 10 or 12 years because it's been very difficult to send an encrypted message to someone on the outside. There's a number of solutions out in the market that allow you to do some interesting things internally within an enterprise, but how do I send a message uh, to john at gmail.com and ensure that John can read it and, and easily read it uh, on whatever uh, system he happens to be on, whether that's mobile or otherwise? And so the, there's a number of patents that we have in this particular area where we can not only send encrypted and digitally signed messages to anybody inside of an organization, in an LDAP or an Active Directory or a GAL, but anybody on the outside who happens to be on a consumer-grade sort of messaging system. Uh, and that's where the whole pickup center capability comes into play. And then the third uh, sort of leg in the stool as it relates to mobile encrypt endpoint is the advanced enterprise tools that are available for uh, enterprise management. This is where all the magic happens, if you will. Customized branding, meaning uh, we can do branding at the enterprise level. So if Bank of America wanted their own brand, uh, that's something that we can accommodate as part of the platform. If we want to uh, uh, enroll a thousand users at a time, we support bulk enrollment. Uh, if we wanted to revoke a thousand credentials of these users at a time, that's something that we can accommodate as well as part of these enterprise tools. So the app itself is obviously the 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 solution that the users, the end users, touch and feel. But there's a number of uh, aspects to the application suite that makes this application viable within the enterprise, and that it kind of is broken up into the into the uh, into that last bucket that you see, which is the enterprise admin uh, capabilities. So benefits, uh, pretty pretty straightforward. Um, you know, we all recognize, and the polls show 88% uh, of everyone who answered uh, uh, are a are absolutely concerned with uh, with uh, email security on mobile devices. So all device all messages are stored on the device uh, encrypted. Um, all uh, use the existing inbox for secure messages. Uh, the credentials are stored in the native keychain or key store of the device. That, that was something that was important, very important uh, in the marketplace, obviously getting feedback from the various uh, CIOs and CSOs out there, basically telling us, listen, you will, if you're gonna do this right, you're gonna have to leverage the crypto capabilities that are built in to the, uh, to the native uh, uh, OS platform. So we've taken the notion of a, of a iOS keychain um, and stored these credentials in the native key space. We've taken a BlackBerry key store and stored those credentials in the BlackBerry key store. Uh, and the same thing applies for Android. Uh, and, and, and because of that, we don't have to install any third-party crypto. We're completely compliant by you know, FIP standards and other sort of certification standards that are out there. And it gives me, uh, as Joe was mentioning earlier, the ability to offer a solution that, that doesn't displace your normal mail client. And that was our ultimate goal. Uh, and that's uh, ultimately where uh, Mobile Encrypt, I think, shines over some of the solutions, the rest of the solutions out there. Moving on, uh, if there is a need uh, for, and, and there is, there are needs uh, uh, for a sandboxed approach, as I like to call it, meaning a completely standalone messaging system that involves, uh, let's use the scenario where you have 50 people across five different companies all trying to do business together. Maybe it's an M&A opportunity. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a, a, a manufacturing a supplier relationship between uh, North America and, uh, and Asia. Uh, 
and there's a need to communicate securely and not have those messages be, be uh, I guess, uh, part of the normal messaging stack, then we do offer a completely cloud-based solution. We offer uh, an app. Uh, in fact, if you go to the iTunes App Store today, you'll see both the Mobile Encrypt Endpoint and the Mobile Encrypt uh, Cloud versions. The cloud is a completely separate sort of, as I mentioned, mail store. It does have IMAP capabilities over SSL to be able to allow to, the messages to be secured and delivered to a native uh, mail client like an Outlook or, or Mac Mail or Entourage or whatever. But ultimately, along with Endpoint, which really fits, I believe, the scenarios of 90% of the market that's out there, uh, we do offer a cloud system that uh, is a completely sandboxed approach. And again, if there's more questions on, uh, on the cloud, uh, we'll be happy to address them uh, during the Q&A session. Yep. Uh, I'll, move, I'll move here since, uh, uh, to give you a little bit of user experience uh, on slide uh, 16. You see what it looks like. Uh, the Compose screen on Mobile Encrypt Endpoint is uh, identical to the Compose screen within the native mail experience. When I compose an encrypted message and I press encrypt, it takes that encrypted message, it, it, it hands it off to the native mail uh, account uh, or native mail client along with the account. So if I'm running Exchange, great. If I'm running a traditional IMAP service, that's fine too. If I'm running POP SMTP for my messaging sort of system, uh, for my for my small business, that's okay as well. So really, just depends on. Uh, we don't really care about what the underlying messaging infrastructure looks like, as long as SMIM is supported, <coughs> which is supported 99.9% of the time. We can basically encrypt the message and deliver it through whatever mail flow that you may have uh, available within your organization. So from from sending and composing to viewing to actually receiving encrypted messages, it's all transparent to. Uh, to the uh, to the uh, 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 to the user. Hey, uh, Robbie, we're going to just open up our fourth slide now, and and then let you finish uh, walking people through the uh, user interface side of things. Okay, sounds great. Uh, and then to complete the uh, uh, sort of discussion around the mobile encrypt suite, we we as I mentioned, we do have the cloud application, uh, which uh, here are some screens of what that looks like. Uh, and again, this is a completely standalone, almost a good enterprise-like solution uh, that's uh, uh, in a sandbox for individuals and organizations that really need a, a messaging system with complete digital signatures, full audit trails, full encryption built right in uh, to the application. And both of these applications that I mentioned are available on the App Store. Uh, and then as we finish up the, uh, the uh, webinar, if there's folks that are interested in uh, in uh, trialing and participating in sort of further activity around utilizing the app, that's something that we can facilitate between uh, between Joe, myself, and some of the uh, some of the uh, FiberLink guys. And with that, Joe, I'll hand it off to you uh, to uh, to for the rest of the presentation. To bring it home. Okay, so I'm going to just uh, kind of uh, jump back over to my slides here. Robbie, thanks. Um, you know, obviously, you know what we like. Uh, about your solution is kind of how how neatly it fits into kind of you know various mobile environments and, and meets various needs. So we think that's important. Uh, if you hang on a second here, I think I've got control back. Can everybody see my slides? Okay, great. Um, so you know what you know what we see the value in in you know Mas 360 plus mobile encrypt kind of together is. You know, holistically, it solves a large set of problems, right? And, and Robbie hit on a lot of them, managing the devices, managing the apps, ensuring that data is secured, uh, providing you with tools to support your mobile users. And, you know, really what we wanted to focus on is, is that kind of MAS360's ability to provide application management for um, getting uh, a piece of security software like Mobile Encrypt out to mobile devices. And then beyond that, just making sure that the, the there's continuous monitoring and appropriate actions being applied if a device goes out of compliance to ensure that folks kind of keep these devices in the appropriate state. Um, so obviously a device can be in compliance one day and out of compliance the next day, right? Somebody jailbreaks it or, or installs an app that they shouldn't or frankly removes an app that they should. So the way that we uh, handle those types of things is uh, we support application blacklisting, which means these apps can never be installed. 
uh, application whitelisting, which means only these apps can be installed, um, or application required list, which means these applications must be installed. And you can configure those lists in Maz360. Obviously, you could, uh, you could add mobile encrypt uh, to uh, a whitelist or a required list. And then through our compliance engine, um, we would be continuously evaluating all your mobile devices and ensuring that if mobile encrypt was in a required list and we found a device without it installed, we could flag that app for an action to be taken based on the administrator's needs. That could be, uh, that could be notifying the user. That could be something a little bit more um, drastic, like um, uh, removing the profiles that give them access to email and WLAN and VPN. Uh, all the way through to wiping the device if uh, you know if, if an organization wanted to be that you know kind of strict about it. So that's kind of how we see uh, what Fiberlink does fitting in with what EchoWorks does to provide a better holistic solution to the whole problem of how do I manage secure mobile devices and the data that either flows through them or resides on them. And you know what I'm going to show you really quickly here is how how simple it is to uh, build your own app store, your own enterprise app store using Maz360. And you know it, it really is quite simple to uh, add either public apps from the Android market or the uh, Apple App Store or your own private apps. And kind of these arrows here are kind of showing you various types of apps that um, have been added to an app store. This is a screenshot from our portal, uh, added to a corporate app store to be pushed out to devices. Um, here we're going to show you a little bit what the end user experience looks like. So what you're seeing here are a couple of screenshots, one from uh, an iPhone, one from an Android device, and the bigger one from an iPad. And so basically what the end user would see uh, as you add apps uh, to your app store is these apps being uh, presented to them as apps that they um, uh, should install on their system. They can click on the install button and then get that app installed. And of course, uh, if it's a required app, like for example, uh, if a company was going to deploy uh, mobile encrypt, we would say that app should probably be required. Um, then uh, as soon as we see that mobile encrypt's been installed, we would then say, okay, that device is now in compliance and it would be granted access to the various resources that uh, you want to allow people to get access uh, to from their mobile device, corporate email, corporate WLAN, uh, corporate VPN being usually the three that folks uh, are most interested in. So this gives you an idea of what the end user sees. Um, so hopefully uh, you kind of understand that a little bit better. And you know, here what we're showing is how you actually can search for an app. Um, you know, one thing we get a lot of great feedback on uh, in, in uh, Maz360 is how easy it is to construct an enterprise app store. And uh, a couple ways we do that, you can see here this first screenshot, you as the administrator, you know, select add a new app, and you tell us where, where the app resides, either the iTunes app store or the uh, Google market, if it's public or if it's a, a, a private app that you've purchased or built yourself, then you would select that uh, off, your, uh, you know, off your hard drive or a network drive where you've got the file actually residing. And if it's a public app, you can see on the right there, uh, it's really simple. You literally just type in uh, something about the app. You can see here this screenshot, we typed in EchoWorks up at the Apple App Store, and, and this is what Maz360 pulls back. So it really makes it quick to find the apps you're looking for in that half a million that now sit in there. And then finally, uh, when you know, you've got your catalog ready, you want to start pushing these apps out to devices, um, we provide a really nice way to um, target it to either individual devices, groups of devices, or all devices that are running a specific OS. So we uh, you know, try to give you all the tools you need to uh, construct the catalog quickly and then push the apps out to the appropriate uh, audience. And I think that kind of gets back to something Robbie was talking about earlier about how important segmenting your user population is. Uh, obviously, not every uh, individual in the company is going to get access to the same apps. Finance folks will have access to different things than sales folks will have, different, uh, will have access to different things than execs. 
Um, and so you really need tools that give you that kind of granularity to, met, to manage things kind of at a global level, like all iOS devices, a group level, like all finance people, or an individual level, like the CFO. And um, you know, we try hard to make sure that all of our functionality in our platform gives IT folks that appropriate level of control for what they're trying to achieve. Um, I mentioned earlier about how we support app blacklists, whitelists, and uh, required apps. And this kind of just is a screenshot showing you uh, how we do that. Um, you can also push updates out to apps uh, through E360, or I'm sorry, through Maz360 uh, for uh, apps that uh, are being managed through our app store. And I mentioned earlier how you can configure our compliance engine, our compliance rules engine, to take actions on your behalf if we detect a device isn't meeting one of your app, um, you know, app blacklist, whitelist, or uh, required app um, lists. And you can see here the kind of actions we can take. So we can alert a user, we can block a device, we can restrict a device, and uh, at the most uh, draconian, we can actually wipe the device if it's out of compliance with one of these three lists in some way. And we also have uh, a report uh, in MAS where you can see all the apps that are installed on your devices. So you can look at it at a device level, meaning I want to see all the apps that are installed on a specific device, um, or you can see all the apps that are installed across your entire organization. I want to see all the apps across all my iOS devices, all my apps across all my Android devices. We give you nice tools to kind of drill down and see that. And you know, that's kind of uh, here what you're seeing is kind of at a, at a device level. So we're, here we're telling you uh, how you can see the software that's installed on a specific device, in this case, Jim's iPhone. Uh, but we also have other reports that provide you with a you know, broader set of data. Show me uh, every single app that's installed across all my, all my iOS devices and tell me how many of those are, uh, how many devices have that app installed on it. So we give you kind of, uh, you know, kind of some nice features for tracking all that. And then, of course, we have our watch list, which is uh, something that you as a Mass360 administrator configure and set up for yourself to tell you about any device that's in any state that you want to track or, or be aware of. And, um, you know, it's typically uh, where people um, begin with Mass360. So kind of when they're kind of after they get their first device set up, typically the next thing they do is they uh, go into my watch list and they configure some personal searches that they want to uh, have running uh, every time they log into the system. So it's a little bit of an idea of um, how, you know, what we do can fit very well around what uh, EchoWorks does to give you better control of your environment, right? So you would certainly want to know about, you know, how many of my devices have mobile encrypt installed, uh, how many don't, right? And those are things you can easily set up in MAS through our uh, watch list. And every time you log into the portal, you'd see how many meet those conditions, how many devices meet those conditions, and you can actually click on those and, and then drill into the list of devices uh, that are specified there. So, you know, it really kind of is a holistic approach to solving it. And I think, you know, it really um, gets back to kind of what, what we've seen have been seen uh, historically, you know, for those of you who aren't familiar with us, um, you know, Mass360 has spent the majority of its life as a platform for uh, securing and managing laptop computers, which were the mobile devices of the day, let's say, uh, you know, over two years ago, right? So, you know, three, four, five years ago, if you went into a corporation and said, tell me about your mobile devices, they were laptops and they were Blackberries, and that's what people had. Um, but as smartphones and, you know, primarily Apple kind of, kind of jump-started this market uh, with the iPhone, um, started hitting the market, and, you know, the Blackberry kind of universe uh, wasn't really able to kind of uh, manage it, People started looking for ways to kind of, you know, manage, secure, lock down those devices. You know, what we saw was, you know, the management of those devices was starting to become more and more like managing laptops was. Now, hopefully for all of us who've had to manage uh, PCs for a living, I think we, we hope that uh, it, it never gets quite to that state where it was difficult to install. But fundamentally what, what we saw happening was 
you know, you would need some type of management infrastructure. So in the laptop world, it might have been uh, SMS or Tivoli or something like that. And then you needed a series of point solutions to provide the layers of security you needed to, uh, you know, implement your security policies, whether that was antivirus, personal firewall, encryption. Um, and I think that, you know, the smartphone slash tablet market is trending in that same direction where, you know, it's going to be a suite uh, of things that solve your security problem, not just one monolithic thing that does it. And each company is going to make those decisions based on what they believe their needs are and what products they think, you know, meet that requirement for them. Um, you know, and we're always kind of big believers in a best of breed approach to these kinds of things. So that's kind of the value we see in things. Um, that ends kind of the, the presentation part of things today. I'm going to go real fast over this. Anyone who joins our webinars regularly knows this. Um, Mass360 uh, was in a bake-off that uh, Network World uh, did about uh, over the in the spring, late spring, May, uh, and was selected as the uh, best platform based on its ease of use. So we love that about our platform. It's certainly one of our design goals. Um, and for us, scenes believing. So. Uh, when we end the webinar today, your browsers are going to get redirected to a screen that hopefully looks like this. And uh, you can sign up for your own free trial of Maz. And as Robbie said earlier, if you want to try Maz with EchoWorks and see uh, how it all works together with Mobile Encrypt, uh, feel free to contact us and we'd be happy to work with you to uh, set up an eval. It's really quick. It's really fast. If you're thinking about doing this, and I think on that last polling question, I think about two-thirds of the folks who uh, responded said, yeah, we are going to evaluate this in 2012. Um, I can tell you that you won't find a, a integrated platform uh, that you'll be able to get up and running and get some really hard data back on quicker than you will MAS uh, with Mobile Encrypt. So, um, you know, if you're really serious about looking at something, we hope you uh, give it a shot. It takes about five minutes to, uh, to sign up and uh, get started. So. Hope you get a chance to try that. Um, we're gonna before we go to Q and A, I'm gonna do some quick wrap up. So uh, for those of you who join us every two weeks, you know we're in the middle of our iOS 5 series. So next Thursday, you know we do this every other Thursday, but with iOS 5, we got a little bit out of sync. Uh, we're gonna do our technical deep dive on iOS 5 profile management. So a lot of new features in iOS 5 that let you lock down and secure profiles. So we're gonna really get into detail on that. Um, you should be getting the link in a minute in the chat panel that will let you uh, sign up for that webinar if you'd like to attend. And then on November 10th, we're doing uh, the last of our iOS 5 deep dive webinars. We're going to talk about app management. And again, iOS 5 uh, added a lot of new capabilities for managing apps. And we want to make sure that you're aware of those. And you know, obviously, I think for anyone who was on our webinar last week where we kind of introduced iOS 5, our iOS five iCloud and Enterprise webinar, um, you know that we've already got support for all the new MDM features that uh, Apple released in iOS 5. So we obviously would like to tell you all about that, why you might want to use it, and how we've uh, integrated with it. Um, you should also be getting the link uh, to some of our past webinars. We record them all. Uh, you know, if you've, uh, if you've uh, got some time, browse through. There might be some topics there that are interesting to you. We've put a couple of up. And uh, we keep all this at the Master Center, which is kind of our online community uh, for uh, mobility experts. So you'll find all kinds of tips, tricks, thoughts, documents, tools. Um, if you've never been there, uh, please come visit. Uh, we've had a ton of traffic over the past couple weeks uh, with all the iOS 5 uh, hype that's been uh, happening out there in the world. Uh, lots of people have been coming to view our iOS 5 content. So if you get a chance, please visit. Um, with that, I'm going to open things up to Q&A, and Robbie, this is always kind of fun here where we work without a net. Um, I think some of these are probably yours. I'll try to, I'll try to address them kind of to the right thing. So first question uh, that's kind of in the queue here is, do you support iPhones and iPads? Uh, yes, uh, we do support uh, iPhones and iPads. Uh, and there's a new patch that's coming out that will be also uh, supportive of the iPhone uh, 5.0 or iOS 5.0 release that uh, that officially came out uh, last week. Uh, so yes. 
Yeah, and we, we support it as well. I don't, I don't think you can really say you have a product in the mobility space right now if you don't support iPhone and iPad. Um, next question, I think this one is definitely yours, Robbie. Do you support provisioning of credentials over the air to the device? Yeah, yeah. So um, this comes up a few times uh, uh, with, with clients who are used to the old way, I guess. You know, when you have to tether your device with a wire to a desktop manager of some sort that allows you to import your keys to the device. Uh, I, you know, if you, if you make people go through those gyrations, they're not going to do it. So the, devi the applications, both for iPad and for iPhone, uh, as well as for BlackBerry and Android for that matter, all support over-the-air provisioning, uh, meaning when the user is activated through the administration console, they will get a key pushed down to their device over the air, regardless of what network uh, they're on, 3G, 4G, or Wi-Fi, or whatever. And basically, from that point onward, they can use the application to send and receive uh, encrypted messages. Superb. Yeah, I mean, over the air is kind of, you know, you know the baseline now, especially now that uh, Apple's going to push uh, iOS updates out over the air now. I think that may be the last kind of bit of the ecosystem that was still tethered. Um, and certainly everything we try to do, we try to make sure it can be done over the air as well. Um, there's a ton of questions rolling in here, so let me get to the next one. Um, I think this is another question uh, about uh, uh, about MobileCrypt. Do I have to change my email address to use the service? Uh, no, no. Uh, uh, you, you don't have to, unlike, you know, again, some technologies out there where you have to change email addresses and your experience, you continue to use your same mail account, so whether that's an Exchange account or a POP account or an IMAP account to use Mobile Encrypt. Uh, so we don't require any kind of change to your email flow, servers, or infrastructure. Yeah, great. Uh, next question, can, I, can encrypted messages uh, be sent to anybody from the device? Uh, yeah, and by anybody, obviously, I, I believe uh, the question is referring to recipients that are outside of a particular enterprise. Uh, so folks on uh, Gmail uh, accounts or Yahoo accounts or Hotmail accounts or, or even their personal domain, it doesn't matter. We, from the device, you can compose an encrypted message, digitally signed message, and deliver it to anybody who's got a valid email address. Mm -hmm. So here's uh, kind of one that's kind of maybe a little bit more uh, of, a, of an opinion statement than a technical question. It's just really uh, the, the, the point is, you know, is B Y does B Y O D really make sense? And you know, it can save companies some money. But you know, is this really what companies want? Because they've got now got this kind of issue of trying to manage these devices that they don't own or control. And is this really what uh, the uh, employee wants? Because they're going to have to have some type of software uh, that the corporation requires installed on the device. So I, I guess one thing I'll add to this one, we did a webinar over the summer about bring your own device, uh, you know, kind of best practices. And we asked the question on the webinar, why, uh, why are you considering this BYOD thing? And uh, one of the options, and I thought it would be the winner or the one that was selected most frequently, was save money. It was actually the least frequently uh, selected option. And um, what... Uh, what people identified as the top reason why they were considering bring your own device was to give employees choice of the mobile device they wanted to use, and primarily that was just for you know productivity reasons and you know employee satisfaction reasons. And I thought that was kind of interesting because you know it, it would it would have seemed it would have seemed to me that uh, saving money would have been the primary driver, but that was not what people identified. Um, so what I think is that while uh, there's certainly a logic to why you would think that people wouldn't want to agree to these things and corporations wouldn't want to offer these things. Um, I think the reality is that, that um, mobility and mobile devices have become more of a, of a lifestyle issue and the mobile device you carry has become more of a, a statement, like a lifestyle statement issue for people. And I think those things are kind of, you know, frankly, um, so important to folks that they're willing to agree to install an app like the Maz360 agent um, in order to allow them to use that device to do work and to do, you know, when they're out of the office. So I, that's at least what I see in some of the data I've gotten uh, from past webinars. I don't know, Robbie, if, if you've kind of 
heard similar tales. Yeah, yeah, a absolutely. Um, it, it's it's exactly that from the not only uh, uh, sort of the typical vertical markets that we deal with, healthcare, financial services, but really any business that you know is looking for these type of uh, solutions. Yeah. So I mean, we we certainly see that. Um, there's a couple questions here, uh, Robbie, about Android. Question is, what what version of Android are you building your client for, and when do you think it'll be ready? Uh, yeah, so the baseline version of Android will will be 2.2 uh, and above, so 2.3, 2.6, and I guess uh, 3.0 now, uh, and we'll be uh, we'll be shooting for uh, a mid November. Uh, launch for Android. As, as those of you who have experience with Android know, it's a bit of a challenge for us app developers. There's so many variations and so many versions and so many uh, hardware manufacturers. So we, we always have to kind of settle in on uh, a baseline that makes sense from a development perspective. So um, look for look for uh, something in the App Store. If you're interested, by the way, if you're interested in Mobile Encrypt Cloud, that's already available in the Mobile Encrypt, uh, or sorry, in the Android Marketplace at uh, marketplace.android.com. Uh, look for EchoWorks or Mobile Encrypt Cloud there. Uh, the endpoint version is something that we're uh, shooting for uh, in the next uh, few weeks. Okay, super. Um, so here's a question that um, I I'll take on. Um, and, you know, Robbie, you can kind of answer for uh, Mobile Encrypt. So the question is really around role-based uh, access controls. Um, and uh, attribute-based access controls. I know on you know the MAS 360 side of things, um, we can integrate with corporate um, Active Directory servers in order to import the roles and the OUs in and then allow policies to be assigned to devices based on people's Active Directory role or OU. Um, don't know, frankly, uh, what the answer would be for, for your platform, Robbie. Yeah, we, we look at... Um uh, roles really as uh, users with active credentials. Um, so a key or a credential is really what what enables the ability to send and receive encrypted messages from these mobile devices. So when you issue a key uh, that's assigned to a particular individual, that private key is then utilized to do these things that we've talked about. Uh, and so within the administration capabilities of the solution, you could at any time suspend or completely revoke the key. So we look at roles not necessarily as you know permissional or access controls. We really look at them as because this is a truly private communications. Um, it's really more about the the uh, the, the roles, I guess, uh, no pun intended, that the uh, credentials play in the uh, in that composition of those messages. Superb. Um, if there's, I think we got to the bottom of the questions here, and we're just about at the top of the hour. Um, if there's, uh, I'll, I'll keep things open here for another minute or so if there's any other questions. Um, otherwise, Robbie, thanks. Um, got a great solution, um, and you know, we're very happy to have you present today and uh, give folks some great information um, about your product and about kind of frankly securing data and securing messaging in general. So that's very helpful to folks. Um, so thanks for thanks for attending attendees. Robbie, thanks for presenting. We'll see you all again in a week uh, for our iOS 5 deep dive. Great. Thank you everyone for uh, your time, and we look forward to speaking again. Thanks.